Hi, this is Sandy Sims with STS Digital, and welcome to part two of the STS VCO FX Delay Distortion Alternate Firmware Modes. Today we covered modes five to nine, tremolo, hi-fi delay, compressor expander, bit crusher, and stutter modes. As with the last video, audio input is patched into the mod jack, and audio output is the same as with the original VCO firmware. Mode 5, the yellow LED, is a semi-clocked tremolo. I called it semi-clocked because it attempts to lock into the internal LFO waveform at varying points. I have patched another SDS VCO in without any gates to demonstrate the tremolo effect. Increasing the decay knob deepens the tremolo effect. I'll set it to full swing. The attack knob controls the tremolo speed. It's set pretty slow at this point. It's trying to lock onto the clock coming in from the RITEM, which is much faster. Let's get some beats from the same clock source as the RITEM is using. Speeding up the tremolo makes the locking more evident. Adjusting the release knob affects the sensitivity somewhat, but mainly changes the point in the internal LFO the clock will snap to. This can give you some skippy cadences and triplets. Part of the fun in this mode is playing with different speeds and phase points. With the clock patched in, it always seems to tremolo in a timely fashion, doesn't it? Tweaking the two knobs to a uniform clock will add an almost random sounding ripple, but as it is semi-locked, it has a repeating cycle, eventually. This setting gives a galloping sound. Changing the clock division will immediately have an effect as well. And changing the release knob's phase point will also change it away from the last rhythm. My preference is, the faster, the better. When the release knob is fully left, there is no locking to the clock. So that's mode number five, the tremolo. Mode number six is the hi-fi delay. I'm gonna patch in a MIDI drum loop for the delay to process. This delay is 12 bits at about CD quality sample rates and is very similar to the car plus delay, just longer delay time. It's on LED number six. The delay's feedback control is the release knob. It can achieve almost 100% and is purely digital, so the highs don't degrade. There is, of course, digital degradation in the 0.1% loss on each loop, but who's counting, right? The decay knob lowers the sample rate if a longer delay is required. 
Note that the original signal is not included, so this can be used to create a stereo effect as well. Like the car plus mode, the CV input offsets the decay knob, or the sample rate. Like any delay, varying the sample rate can give great results, but the clarity here is quite astounding. The attack knob controls the buffer size used by the delay. This is useful if you want to approach the car plus range, in lower end anyway. Interestingly, the sample rate can be slowed right down so other lo-fi effects can be realized. This would be great for ambient sounds. Here's a demonstration of the feedback gain. One last surprise for mode number 6 is the trigger input function. A pulse on the input will reset the delay buffer, so some pretty cool stuff can be done with it. Shortening the buffer gives a complex drone sequence of sorts. Adding the CV back into the equation gives some gnarly results indeed. Almost unpredictable notes can be heard without changing the actual sample rate. The results of this will change with different types of waveforms, too. Well, enough playing. Let's move on to mode number 7, the compressor expander. This is actually more of a compressor with auto makeup and not so much of an expander per se. It can be used to bring up levels to the front, but being 12-bit has a unique sound quality, as you'll hear. The attack knob sets the post-compression pre-limiter gain limit. The release knob sets the threshold for compression and the decay knob sets the compression ratio of 1 to 1 up to 16 to 1. And all that's not important, just tweak it till it sounds great.
While compression mode sounds great with a VCO, it's best used with samples or percussion. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that. By the way, any modes I haven't mentioned a trigger gate function for will have a default function of soft muting the audio when it's low. This one does it. Well, on the bit crusher. Mode number eight, the bit crusher. Using the same drum loop, I'll demonstrate the basic bit crusher. It starts out at 12 bits and reduces to one on the attack knob. Here's around 10, maybe eight, six, four, three, two, one. There's no indication that the sound is more important than the number anyway, right? What makes this bit crusher different is the sample rate can also be varied. So there are two methods, bit crushing and retro, retroing. Is that a word? The decay knob adjusts sample rate as usual. And yes, the CV input offsets the decay knob as usual. The release knob is a bit harder to explain. This is a floor level adjustment. Its purpose is to remove the dither on coarser bit settings, even though it'll work with any setting. It can be defeated, so there's no effect if you want the DC noise to chatter through by turning it fully left. I'll clean it up so you can see what I'm talking about. Notice the symbols are shorter, then longer. It's because the lower levels are removed to silence. This stops dithering with the coarser bit settings. It works smoothly though, so it can be useful. Enough with the drum loop. Let's try VCO input. Some people, myself included, love that aliasing harmonic present with lower sample rates. Anyone that owns a reflex live loop would be familiar with mode number 9, stutter. I kind of invented this mode in the 80s so it seems to worm into anything I design that gives the opportunity. Anyway, this is the equivalent of the fine stutter in the RLL. For the rest of you I'll give a bit of a description. Stutter overlays a binary number onto the address of a short delay as an exclusive OR. That number is selected with the release knob. There are 128 possibilities in this version of Stutter. It's best to scan around on the release knob for that sound. But wait, because Stutter involves a short delay, changing the sample rate on the decay knob or phase mix, which is on the attack knob, it will alter the sound. See? Now it's completely different. A tone to accompany other oscillators can be tuned with the decay knob and remain stationary even though the octave and timbre may change with the release knob. The 
The best thing about stutter mode is it's absolutely live audio. Well, with a short delay. The other VCO is outputting a simple triangle wave, so you can see the potential of this, based on the sound now being produced. The CV input is going to offset the decay knob, which is, again, the sample rate. So there you have it, modes 5 to 9 are covered. The last modes, 10 to 15, will be in the next video. Mode 11 won't be though, as it was covered in the wave folding video, which is already posted. Thanks for watching. I'm Sandy Sims. Keep on patching!